Hey folks, so today we're going to talk a bit about spinning different fiber preparations and in particular we're going to talk about how I like to spin my fresh rovings that I make. Uh, right here in front of us I've got a handful of different things, three different things that, uh, while they probably look fairly similar, are actually quite different. Uh, right here, this brown stuff is roving, this is comb top, and this is also roving, one of my fresh rovings. So, what's the difference? In short, roving is carded and comb top is combed. Think of combing as being the process that takes everything that is a little bit funky or short or variable out of your fiber and leaves you with nothing but the cream of the crop, also called the top. And think of carding as being what uh, takes everything that you've got and homogenizes it, puts it all together into a spinnable form that you're going to work with. That's an oversimplification, but that's a good starting point for what we're talking about. So these have all been cha chained up in this sort of braided looking configuration, but they're a little bit different. So I'm going to start by undoing this roving. And I'm just going to, to undo it, I'm just going to open up one end. And then it just pulls. You just pull it loose. You can pull off just as much as you want to work with right now, or pull off or work from the whole thing, or any way that you like to do it. I'll put this to the side for a minute and scoot this out of the way too. Now here I have the comb top. I'm gonna undo it, same thing kind of loosening it up and opening it up at one end. I wait till I've got this loop, and basically this is a giant crochet chain, so it's like I'm uncrocheting it as I go. See how that works? There's more in here than it looked like there was. You do want to be a little gentle because you don't want to pull it all the way apart yet. So yeah. So how can I tell that this is combed and the other stuff is carded? Well, as I'm looking at this, right here, you can see these kind of parallel strip looking things, right? Everything looks very parallel. And if I tear off a chunk from the end, I'm going slow, I tear off a chunk from the end, and I look at how everything's laid out, you can see that everything's laid out very parallel. And if I pull off a few staples, you can see that they are all pretty uniform in in their length. By comparison, when I look at this roving, it doesn't have that sort of parallel look as much. It's fuzzier, right? And when I pull off a chunk from the end, again, going slowly, you can see that there's actually a lot of stuff that is more haphazardly arranged in here, and that the staples, the staple length, the length that the, the typical length of the individual fibers can be very variable. They're not all the same length. So that's one of the ways that you can tell. Now, the fresh rovings, on the other hand, I make on my drum carter and then diz them off very tidily. So here's an example of one. Now, when you unroll this and open it up, you'll see that there's one end here that maybe has a little bit of dangly fiber and then one end where it's actually a loop. And uh, the loop is the end that we want to have come undone last. So I'm coming up here and looking for where this was tucked in. And as I kind of open it up loosely, I can find it. Now I'm just opening it loosely, gently pulling it out. You can see, probably, as you're looking at this, that this one goes through a transition color progression thing. Some people refer to that as a gradient kind of effect, where 
the color will gradate from one to another, or possibly through multiple colors, shifting gradually through them. So this one goes from that maroon with the sea foam to this greenish teal with the sea foam. Now this loop part here, I'm going to open all the way up because I folded it over, and this end here in the loop, when I put these up, when I put these up, this is me specifically with these fibers, when I put these up, this loop end is the one that you will probably be happiest spinning from. So that's what we're going to actually spin from in a couple minutes. Sometimes I like to let these sit for, oh, five, ten minutes uh, just to kind of fluff up. Um, if they seem to have gotten compacted, then sometimes I will let them sit overnight. So I'm grabbing the end. This was the end that had the loop in it, the last one that came undone when I unraveled the whole braid, the whole little crochet chain. Now I've got my wheel threaded up, and I'm ready to go. I'm going to get started spinning. I've got my leader going here. I'm building up some twist in it, and I'm just touching this right on there to join. And now I can spin this straight from the end of this roving. And, um, spin it with multiple grafting methods. Right now I'm spinning it with a short draw that lets a little teeny bit of twist that lets a little twi teeny bit of twist sneak past every so often. Very comfortable. You can see everything drafts very smooth and easy. But you can also spin easily with a long draw method in this preparation. Right from the end, just as we go. see that there is twist in between my hands. This makes a little bit of a fuzzier yarn. And I'm letting this go just a little bit thick and thin. Oh no, that's too thin, so I'm going to break it and rejoin up here where it's not too thin. And come back over it. easy this spins right from this mass. If you want to work from a smaller amount, that's no problem. You really can just off chunks. So now I have this little chunk. I'll put it right here and pick it up when I get when the time comes. So I can spin that way too. I'm going to spin to the end of this tuft that I have here in my hand. With this kind of supported long draw, I've got one hand up towards the front. I'm going to be drafting back mostly, but a little bit in both directions twist in there. A little bit of light double drafting, just to say there's one drafting pass followed by another kind of fine tuning pass. Now I can just pick up this end and keep going. Just keep going. And rejoin on. Watch this join. I like this. I just let that touch, and I bring this over, and then I draft forward. And there we go.